Hello and welcome back, everybody. We have the Is the Science, Is This Science, the new religion script that Michael has put together uh, all the way from Germany. And uh, in English, of all things, uh, Michael is is stepping out on a limb. And he's been stepping out on a limb for, well, I'd say two years now, almost, uh, mm -hmm. on doing English sessions with uh Myself and uh, at times your Klisman, which we haven't had for a very long time. But at any rate, thank you very much, Michael, for making the script, taking the time to do English and bringing it to the English speaking world. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation, Brad, and thank you very much for your support and patience to your audience out there. You see, this is a very, very small community who is interested in these topics, but nevertheless, I think everything is concerned to technology and science these days. And so we do not have to get into a discussion of the current uh, uh, situation out there. If we would do that, we would not see the picture in general, I think, I presume. And so you see that every year there, there's a new stuff and a new fear coming up and then it's uh, labeled this and next year will be labeled that. And uh, from that you see you could go on and on and on. And I think you have to see the, the big picture and the big picture is that we have been misled by so-called science or science so-called as the Bible speaks. Uh, for centuries, oh no, 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 for thousands of years. And that's the issue of this series, which uh, I think will be a long running series, because there are much, much to it. And uh, from, in general terms speaking, from the beginning or since the beginning of mankind, people have been misled. By whom? By the serpent who was more subtle. And he's more subtle because he's very smart. And the, even the Bible in the New Testament tells us that we have to be smart as or wise as serpents and smart as doves, if I remember correctly, Brett. Harmless, yeah. correct, yeah. Yeah, harmless as doves. Harmless yeah. as doves and wise as serpents. So the serpent was very wise. He was very wise because he inherited, he um, contained the wisdom of the spirit called Satan. And Satan is much more clever, smart, um, elaborated, whom, uh, what, whatever you will attribute to him, than any living human being in the flesh. He's, he's, he's much more experienced because he's much more older than you. And he inhaled his wisdom from the source of God. So he was so clever that he even deceived a third of the angels of heaven. And so it absolutely escapes me how people can really think at the same time of, oh yeah, uh, God and Satan exist. And on the other hand, but I am so smart. Yeah, so you see that if you are really so smart and we are not smart, we are very foolish and dumb people. We are living in a sinful flesh here. It's not right of me, but the but the Bible tells us that no, none of us is is uh, is right and correct and without sin. So how can you expect to be smarter than Satan? Satan was so smart that he received a third of the angels. That's thirty three point three percent of angels of heaven yeah can you can you imagine what what that means yeah how tricky and how subtle satan is working and so all these scientists and highly educated people they think they are too smart to think of god existing or jesus christ or satan uh, spirits existing they are all too smart to think to think about that but you see all we are all being manipulated all over again not only by people but uh, from spirits everybody has been influenced by spirits that's where the term inspiration has been derived from so after that long introduction let us go to this week if i have uh, looked up correctly it's session number eight Science is the new religion, question mark. I found something which will help us a lot. This is the website called answersingenesis.org. It's been, I think, introduced by a guy called Ken Ham. 
And he's about the biblical science or biblical knowledge, biblical text against the so-called common science or worldly science. And um, this is very interesting because it will help us a lot. I'm just mentioning it because I have not studied him and I'm not interested in Mr. Ken Ham for his personality. I'm just interested on what's right and what's wrong. But I think that this website can provide very much useful information. I, I say that very, very, very uh, carefully because I have not studied uh, Mr. Ken Ham properly. But I found the website even today and I thought, yeah, that could be of, of good help because first of all, obviously it's in English and second of all, it just um, measures everything against the Bible. It's called Answers in Genesis. Yeah. So here you have a source of other people who are in nearly the same mindset as we are as Bible believing Christians, because uh, Ken Ham has put up uh, many questions and of course many answers to it, um, which will help us a lot that we can just mention it. And if somebody has a question which we cannot uh, answer proper, properly, properly, sorry, on this channel, then you might go to that very website, answersingenesis.org. For example, Cain's wife, you know, what's what's the name of it? You see these uh, these questions, which actually has no big effect on, on someone's faith, are being used to manipulate people into believing that uh, there is nothing to it when it comes to biblical uh, tales or biblical events, something like that. Everybody is trying to put the Bible on blame, so it's a just a modern kind of fairy tale book or something like that. And for example, the names of Cain, wives. Yeah? So the first murder on earth, the first human murder on earth, because the Bible tells us in John 8, 44, that um, the Satan was a murderer from the beginning. Yes, but Cain was the brother of Abel and he slew him to death. So he murdered him out on the field. Yeah? So we do not have to go into this matter. I just want to have it on general terms here that many events who are being uh, pictured and uh, talked about in Genesis are being handed over in this Answers in Genesis website and that I found very appropriate so that we don't have to discuss it here. You can on your own time, on your own spare time and according to your likes and dislikes, you can uh, search it out on your own. Yeah, but many, many, many people have tried um, to put the Christians on blame who tried to defend the Bible and try to spread the world because everybody, everything you do will be strictly against the teachings of the world. That's why Satan is called the adversary. So we have to face the adversary. And of course, it's a spiritual war. That means that uh, the, the spirits of Satan will provoke you and also uh, have filled out uh, many things in the textbooks that our children are have to learn so they get good grades. You don't get good grades by self-thinking or rethinking or uh, self-learning or putting anything into question, but just to learn what's in the textbooks. Yeah, then you get good grades. It had nothing to do with knowledge. It has something to do with indoctrination and learning by uh, just following the rules, but it has nothing to do with uh, cleverness or knowledge. It's just how much, how, how good you can remember certain things which have been told to you. But it's, it had nothing to do about the truth or the content of truth. So, for example, the name of the wife of Cain has been discussed in the so-called Scopes trial. Yeah, I will mark it here, red, yeah. And skeptics of the Bible have used Cain's wife time and again to try to discredit the book of Genesis, not the band Genesis, but the book Genesis of the Bible as a true historical record. Mostly Christians have not given an adequate answer to this question. As a result, the world seems them as not being able to defend the authority of the scripture and this the Christian fate. At the historic Scopes cried in Tennessee in 1925, a man called William Jennings Bryan, the pros prosecutor who stood for the Christian faith, failed to answer the questions about Cain's wife. Posed by the ACLU law, Clarence Dorrow, this is the interrogation. Yeah, did you ever discover where Cain got his wife? And uh, 
the uh, answer was no, sir. I leave the agnostics to hunt for her. You have never found out. I've never tried to find was the answer. Question, you have never tried to find. Answer, no. Question, the Bible says he's got one, doesn't it? Where are the other people on the earth at that time? And the answer is, I cannot say. The question, you cannot say. Did that ever enter your consideration? And the answer was, never bothered me. Question. Chen, there were no other records, but Cain got a wife. You see, that goes on and on and on. And then the last answer is, that is what the Bible says. And the question arises, where she came from, you do not know. Yeah? So, you see, this is a trial and you can, and, and this uh, humble man could not uh, defend the Bible because uh, not everything is recorded in the Bible, which is of no importance. But for this, this world outside, uh, many things are very much uh, important than uh, for the Bible. Yeah. So, I can only recommend to look up to this website. It's very, very, very interesting accounts on on things, and uh, so we, we we have not 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 to go into this content. And uh, it is just for example that people think there are certain races on our planet, so-called planet, which is not a planet, and there are no races, yeah? because everybody is a descendant of Adam and Eve, obviously, huh? There must be someone who was first, and <clears throat> sorry, and evolution uh, doesn't tell us uh, where uh, male and female uh, were being originated from. Yeah. So if you got one cell, uh, when did it divide, and when did it split in male and female, and when did it reproduce, and for what reason? Out of random? I don't know. Very interesting. Brett, are you still with me? Oh yeah, I'm, oh, I'm that's here. good because I just heard that perfect silence and I thought that maybe I'd lose the connection or something. Oh no, 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 I'm here. Oh, okay, okay. So there are no races; they are just the descendants of one man and one woman. Adam, who was the first man on Earth, yeah, the first created being, human being of mankind. I have to watch my words here. Yeah, and so there are no races. Yeah, they did not occur at the same time on different places, but they all have, they all been originated from Adam and Eve, except they all came from the semen of Adam and from the womb of Eve. Okay, because Eve actually is the first woman. That is, is her name. The first mother of earth, the first woman. That is called Eve. Yeah. You see, the first man. I don't know which kind of Bible he's using here. Um, he's claiming Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For that reason, I have here the very famous Esort software, which for Windows users at least is uh, free of charge. And I think for Mac users, it's about $10 or something like that, right? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm a Mac user. I bought it. It's a wonderful thing to have. Yeah, that's that's why I ask you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so, I, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, Michael, but... Um, Mac users are very few and far between, and uh, we get labeled as uh, uh, heretics because we use a different computer. But, you know, the, these are irrelevant issues. A computer is a computer, okay? When I was working uh, in a computer company, it was in the beginning of the 1990s, uh, Mac users were uh, first and foremost uh, people in the graphic departments. So people, people with uh, publishers, uh, producers, architects, uh, uh, desktop publishing, these these kind of of uh, professions. Uh, this was typ typical for for Mac users. Uh, everything which has to be uh, well, in, in well, graphic terms, you know, spectacular. Quite frankly, Michael, there there are people that absolutely hate Mac users because they are uh, uh, tend to be you know 
different. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I've had uh, uh, acquaintances of mine uh, um, spit fire at me for having a Mac. And, uh, you know, it's none of your business. Mm-hmm. You know, you choose what you want to do and you do it. You know, there's one principle that's involved here that I can think of in the Bible, and that is we stand in the in the liberty where Christ has made us free. That means we should be pretty much open to anything the the world is in endeavored with. And uh, if you got a problem with that, then you should come to me and talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, Acts seventeen twenty six says uh, that we've been made of one blood, all nations of men, to, for to dwell on the face of the earth. So, I mean, there you go. I mean, it's really simple, Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. It, it, it is simple, but the problem is the word makes it so complicated. Remember, she blinded me with science means yeah, yeah. to deceive people with the, with the elaborate well, content. They want to get people thinking about the flesh and the creation instead of the spirit and, you know, the whole uh, uh, message of the, of the gospel has been transformed from a um, salvation through works. Uh, apparently it's never been that way, but this is kind of the way the mind works. You know, our minds are, are so uh, preoccupied with uh, all of the different arguments and yeah, you were going to say something, Michael. Yeah. You, you know what, what I, what, what my concerns or my th- thoughts is are on the creation versus evolution. You see that evolution People come up with the idea that everything has been created just by evolution with a big bang. It's just that it absolutely leaves out any spiritual activities. It leaves out the Holy Spirit. It leaves out everything spiritual. So it is only dead matter. Yeah. Satan wants to wants to deceive you. Wants to believe you in only being matter, some carbon things, a little bit of oxygen, and that's it. Yeah, so you should you shall be dumbed down to believe that you are just an existed being which came out of nowhere and has no psychic abilities uh, so far because you have been just created out of uh, out of a stone and wood and out of a soup and out of a big bang. So it just leaves out the spiritual context, and we know that we are, uh, according to Ephesians chapter five, we. Uh, wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities in high places, means spiritual places. And that's people just think of what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, whom I'm going to marry, what I'm, what kind of car I'm driving, uh, what I'm kind of clothes I'm buying, what precious clock I'm wearing. You don't think spiritual. You see that spiritual things are being held down as the earth. Oh. Um, you feel sorry for your neighbor or you don't have to you just keep on your own business keep your eyes on your own business do get on your out of your own satanism says that do what thou wilt yeah don't care about others do what thou wilt so every every moral every empathy has been dumped down in this world you see that you don't need it to survive it's just you and that's the only person who is responsible and who's much more important than any other is you that satanism tells you and Satan tells you that, oh, you're not, you're not being created by a divine being. No, 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 you just come from dead matter. And leaves absolutely out every spiritual content. Then on the other hand, I question myself that why go people into believing into spiritual activities like the spiritual exercises of the Jesuits or uh, Lucifer's trust with all their spiritual sessions and uh, many other things, items, meditation, yeah, all this, all this stuff. You see, if you would just uh, consist of that matter, uh, where does your brain, where does your mind derives from? Okay, getting back to the Genesis. So in the Bible, it is absolutely clear stated that one origin is Adam and Eve, and that's it. 
Adam was created by God himself out of the dust of the earth and Eve was created with a rib out of Adam. And, thus, and, and there is a big, big thing. He was in bio biological les lessons in school. Uh, children usually learn that, oh yeah, could, cannot be true because uh, men have the same amount of ribs than women do. Uh, but uh, you see that uh, it is God who made that. It is not a. It is not a doctor who did that, and he said, "Oh no, I cannot do it because uh, Adam died during the operation." No, it has. It, it was God doing it. So if, if people don't believe in an Almighty God, you see, they can come up with every question, and you can answer that on on any question they come up with. And see, our God is Almighty. If he, if he uses a rib and he can make an entire woman out of it. If, he's, if, he's, if, if Jesus Christ, not by accident, I think, uses uh, dust from the earth to, uh, to, to make, a, make a cream or something like that and smear it on the eye of a blind man and he could see, he's, he's uh, testifying that he's the son of God because God made the man out of dust and that's my that's my account why the blind man could see after Jesus Christ uh, has has healed him uh, because Jesus Christ was doing the work of God I cannot recall the exact chapter now of course but you see that it just came into my mind okay so Adam was the head of the human race when he fell we were in the loins of Adam fell also this we are all separated from God. Yeah, and that's also the consequence why we are not living in the Garden of Eden anymore. Okay, so this website is very, very in interesting and very intense. And uh, also, if we believe in other things on this web website, you see, one blood means that everybody who's been punctured or everybody who's been uh, cut with a knife has red blood. Only uh, people of nobility claim they have blue blood. But, but this, you see that they want to uh, distract themselves. They want to, to be different uh, from others. They want to be supreme. Oh no, we do not run uh, red blood through our veins. We have blue blood. Huh? So Adam and Eve, their sons and daughters, their was the offspring was Noah and his sons, three sons, three wives, and his wife makes eight altogether. And afterwards, one of the sons of Noah, he was being responsible for the Tower of Babel and their people. <clears throat> so <clears throat> out of two people, Adam and Eve, all the different people with different colors and different languages arose because God uh, confused their language at the Tower of Babel. You see, my point of view is that the Tower of Babel was not only built to reach God, so like a skyscraper to reach heaven and see that, oh, we reside from the top down. You see that every hierarchical structure, uh, like a pyramid or so, then there's one on top and uh, the, the, the only servants or slaves are on the bottom. <clears throat> no, but just to prevent that another flood would came and uh, kill them. You see that at least uh, one, some people would have survived in the Tower of Babel. That's my kind of thinking why the Tower of Babel was built. There are several, several explanations. It goes much more deeper than that. But we, we will come in, I think, uh, second to next or three sessions from now, we're going explicitly into that. So all the, the color groups, this is microevolution. Micro yeah? The people or the skin adapts to the environment conditions. So um, that has something to do with melatonin. I, I was being educated so that the color uh, just does not need that much uh, vitamin D as a man with a, with a very uh, uh, bright, uh, skin color, Caucasian or something like that, we, we have to assimilate more vitamin D, vitamin D, because we do not get that much sun as people who are living in the, in, in Africa, near the equator. 
Yeah, so there are many, 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 many interesting things. And I'm not a scientist. You see that I have to think for myself on these matters. I have not studied the subject, but I found it very interesting that uh, out of the uh, Tower of Babel, uh, the people were spread around the world with, uh, yeah, and then uh, that occurred that uh, people have uh, several, uh, yeah, several faces and uh, several, uh, yeah, special uh, languages occurred. So I, I think that's that's a, that's a very good thing that we have all something special. Yeah, so we, we are not uniform people. We do not look alike, all of us, but we are different. Yeah, also we have all different characters. You won't find anybody in this earth, on this earth, which is absolutely exact, uh, uh, yeah, similar to you. And he says that, oh, yeah, he talks the way I do. He looks the same uh, the way I do. Um, he likes the things I do. Even when you have uh, twins, you will see that they have uh, different characters. And you see that this is just also, for me, it's also a sign that there is a divine intervention. Because if it was just only a reproduction process, uh, if you got twins who are just merely two minutes apart, then they would uh, be the same. Yeah, also uh, for other reasons. But let's let's continue. I'm not. Uh, I, otherwise, I would lose it here because there are so many um, interesting points uh, to make. So we are all sinners. Uh, and we are being dependent on the mercy of God. Yeah. And the first woman was Eve. She must. She was the mother of all living. If we go down into the creation of men and women, the second chapter of Genesis, then God formed man out of dust of the ground and breathed into breath, sorry, into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. So men do not possess a soul, which uh, psychologists would like to uh, to point out. Oh, yeah, you got a soul. No, we are souls. You see that even in psychology, the first uh, general principle is wrong in the light of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. So when we when we then were together with Adam and Eve, Eve is the mother of all living. I have to look it here. Look up for it. Eve. Find next. Switch item was not found. Eve was not found. Where is Eve? Eve is not found. Eve is lost. Cannot find Eve. Yeah, she is called. She has to be called women. Yeah, Ishash. Yeah, the feminine form, women. We come. We come to that much, much later. But I cannot find Eve at the moment, so I have to look it up. This is the search function of Esod. So I'm looking for Eve. Ah, it's 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 in the third chapter. Okay, so Eve, the life giver, not the first woman, life giver. So she gives life. Hmm? Not a creator, a giver. Okay. Not a creator. Man cannot create. Okay, so I'm not going into that, but uh, I found that uh, illustration very interesting, Brad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to have to let, have a little bit and... Uh, huh? I found that very nice. So, he, of course, he was the only one. And he must be deeply in love. You see, if, if, if you do not know any women, if you don't know that women could exist, and then out of a sudden you see a, a woman, he must be out of his mind, which actually he was. Because otherwise, you see that he must be very deeply in love to be, uh, yeah, to, 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 be, to sin like, like Eve. Or to 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 have the first sin. Yeah, he was the first sinner. Yeah, Eve didn't know any better. And Adam was the first sinner. The Bible says because Adam could have chosen between God and the deception of the serpent or the deception from Eve, but he chose the deception instead of following the commandment of the Lord God that he shall not uh, taste yeah. from fruit. Michael, we call that putting someone on the spot. 
Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Cain was the first child of Adam and Eve. That's uh, let me go a card of that. And uh, he had several brothers. For example, uh, Adam and Eve begot Seth. Uh, sure. And Adam lived uh, hundreds of years, hundreds of years. So they have many. They have supposedly many children. Now, scripture doesn't tell us how many children were born to Adam and Eve, but uh, the Jewish historian Josephus wrote the number of Adam's children, as says as the old tradition. Uh oh, so it's just uh, by hearsay. Well, 33 sons and 23 daughters. Huh? So this is tradition, it has nothing to do with uh, truth. Huh? Tradition and truth starts with GR, that, that, that's it. So now my computer does like to block me. OK, so we're not told when Cain married or many of the details of other marriages and children, but we can say for certain that Cain's wife was either his sister or a close relative, of course, because they were all descendants from Eve. Yeah. The Hebrew word for wife means ishash and means woman, wife, female. We have that explanation as well in Esau, Eve being life giver. So if you would like to find out what this uh, website actually offers, then you are free to do so. Just Adam and Eve were thrown out on this, of the Garden of Eden, and then uh, because sin occurred, and the curse of God was that uh, they surely will die and will have a limited lifespan, and uh, yeah, they were thrown out, and they had to work hard for their living. No, they were not in paradise anymore. But you see that... Uh, the law against close intermarriage actually appears in Leviticus, according to that website, in Leviticus 18. So a long, long, long time after Adam and Eve were rocking down on the earth. Because if they would not reproduce among themselves, there would be no reproduction at all. There is only one creation. There are no aliens. And there is also not a pre-Adam-Eve creation, something like that. So the point where the law against close intermarriage occurred was in Leviticus. Yeah, that's after the, the captivity in Egypt. So thousands of years later, 2,500 years, more or less. That's many, many, many generations. Uh, yeah, so people, people, there's also an argument people come up with and said, oh, yeah, yeah, they have uh, intermarriage and this is forbidden. And you see that uh, people do not do not like uh, to, to study subjects. So I'm skipping it here because I see that it's, it, it will take that long to go into that. We would have 5000 sessions after uh, after all. Um, I just want to go into other things. Um, Adam and Eve's descendants were very intelligent people because Adam is supposed to be very intelligent. You see, if you would l live more than 800 years, what would you supposed to be? You would not be supposed to be on the, on the same intellectual level as you, been, as you were at 25. Yeah. We are told that Tubal made musical instruments such as the harp and the organ in Genesis 4 and Tubal Cain worked with brass and iron. Genesis 4 to 2, we can go into that. Now, there we are to the music. Uh, let's have it here. You see, I am being... Ah, Genesis, sorry. Now no, I lost it totally. Genesis 4, 22, 21. Yeah. Tubal, Cain, an artificial in brass. Copper, hence something made out of metal. And iron. Yeah. And Tubal Cain worked with brass and iron. Yeah. Genesis 4 to 2. Because of intense evolutionary indoctrination, many people today have the idea that their generation is the most advanced that had ever been on this earth because the earth is no planet. Sorry, but I'm not going accord to the uh, publisher of that website here. 
Just because we have jet airplanes and computers doesn't mean we are the most intelligent or advanced. This modern technology is really a result of the accumulation of knowledge. We have greatly degenerated compared to people many generations ago because there, we have a limited life. There we life. go. That's the truth right there. Yeah, we have a limited lifespan and we, we are falling short of the glory of God, which, which, which means that uh, the seduction is everywhere, that people think, think that text about five times larger <laughs> it really needs to stand out <laughs> yeah that is it is really you know this is the this is the 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 real point about the channel that i produce and michael i think you would agree that you know um now more than ever is a time where we should support and encourage our brethren to take and start studying independently of everybody. Don't let anyone change your mind. You know, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone spoil you through philosophy, through vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. Does that ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, we may be nowhere near as intelligent or inventive as Adam and Eve's children. That's true. Yeah, they were at Adam and Eve were at source. They were speaking to God. They were learning from God for hundreds of years. Oh, you were learning from men in 12 or 14 or 15 years, or maybe when, if you have studied for 20 years of your life, uh, listening to man, compared to hundreds of years listening to God. Yeah, so, man, 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 that, this is a, it, it's, it's quite a difference, huh? Yes. And Cain, and Cain had the knowledge and talent to know how to build a city. Yeah. So I would really like to to post uh, to to hand over the information of that man. Uh, many of the things have been uh, written down in the New Answers books. Uh, one, 25 questions on creation, evolution, and the Bible by Ken Ham. You see, I'm not going to accord to everything he writes, and I haven't studied uh, this guy because I'm studying the Bible. Yeah, but uh, I think that uh, for a start, uh, this uh, could be also a very interesting uh, topic. You see that uh, usually uh, years ago, I recommended Ken um, Hovind. Yep, Kent Hovind. Kent Hovind. Kent Hovind, yes. Yep, that's it. Kent Hovind, yeah. Not Ken, but Kent Hovind, yeah. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, this is also not correct. Where well, we are all these videos? Usually I come across dozens of videos of him. No, yeah, these are the old ones. Yeah. Now yeah, this is Kent Hovind. Afterwards he was put in jail. And uh, afterwards he came up with the idea that Islam is the source of all evil or the feats of the metal man of, of Daniel. We, we will go into that later on. But uh, yeah, Kent Hovind, yeah, I, I used to recommend uh, uh, years ago, um, but after he went out of jail, you see that uh, it's a different uh, Kent Hovind. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. Okay, so you see the point is just there are many people who are uh, being not dumbed down and uh, who will ha take a stand for the Bible, uh, biblical explanation of Genesis. Uh, Ken Ham, for example, um, is also somebody who comes or, or he came from the science department. He's about 70 years old, coming from Australia. And um, he's uh, he began teaching high school in Brisbane and he's been has a bachelor degree in applied science and a diploma in education etc etc so he has studied uh, science uh, in his young age yeah and so he came up with the idea that uh, every so many things which are being taught in, in in our worldly science is absolutely not true or cannot be proven i found it very interesting when i read uh, some kind of his uh, articles online 
Yeah, because Genesis uh, 1, of course, says in the beginning God created, no, not uh, Big Bang created or everything else or a big soup or rainfall or what else. God created heaven and the earth. And it has everything to do with the spirit of God and nothing else. It had nothing to do with, uh, with wood or stone or something like that. So the spirit of God created. God created. God is spirit. Okay. Yeah, and God is not drunk either. No. He's so this sober. is his website. Yeah. <laughs> He's sober. He doesn't invite drunks into his kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, this is the context of Genesis. God said, so he spoke everything in existence, which is uh, the Son of God created everything, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word of God. So God said, when God said something, then it was Jesus Christ who said something. God said and God made. When God said, then let be a firmament in the midst of the waters, then God made the firmament. So it was being made by saying, by speaking out. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so obvious that it is the word of God who created everything. And it's absolutely impossible for people in our worldly understanding that uh, something is there who can create something by just saying. Yeah, that is a wonder. Hmm? It has nothing to do with materialism. I, I, if we would have a Bible study, we could go in every verse and we will not go as far as I'm concerned, into, into science and new religion. But science just means that uh, people try to explain something mainly on false basis, on the false, on, on a wrong uh, uh, basement of ideas. So the basement of ideas in the general science, in the world science, means that uh, the creation has been done by evolution. Right, I would say foundation, Michael. Yeah, foundation, yeah. Yeah, the foundation or the uh, um, the principle, uh, what would you call it? Um, the very source. The base, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Yeah, you see, war, man. And I got a, I found it very interesting. I looked it up in etymology, what it actually means. And woman actually means adult female human. It, is, it has been said, rumor has it, that it comes from late old English. But you see that late old English is not the original language of the earth. From women. Literary woman man. Uh, oh, I know, I know, I know many people out there who are so-called... Uh, uh, feminists or something like that would not like that, but you see, the truth is the truth and stays the truth. Women, female servant. Huh? Women, female servant. Isn't it interesting? And what did God said? It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help, meet for him. A help. Yeah? And then we learn from Old English, it has been a female servant. So serve the man, serving man, or matriarchy, was the original intention. Of course, if the woman had only the possibility to bear children, then she's supposed to do the household and to educate the children, to raise the children. And man is supposed to, to hunt and to build a fence around everything and to protect the family and to make money or to get food for the family and the little child's children. I know, I've learned yesterday, I've learned that men can also bear, bear women, but that's only that uh, women can change their sex on the passport. Yeah? And then they become men, and so men can bear children, because you see that they are men just on the passport. But it's, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating anybody who has such issues. But if somebody decides to be a man, mentally, but still has a womb, then physically he or she stays a woman. 
I think that's not hard to explain and not hard to, to, to come up with. I'm not making it up. It's just to see that if your your body is is a woman's body, you have a womb, then you are still a woman when you bear a child, when you give birth to a child. If you decide that you're mentally being a man, that's it, it, totally other. You see that you have to to differ from mentally mentally things and physically physical things and giving birth is a physical thing okay so female human being being as you see that woman reminds me of womb yeah this comes from old norse old frisian wombi or dutch wommer german wommer Wama, belly, paunch. You see that I don't know if, it, if, if really the original explanation of women is correct. Roman female sermon from women. Yeah, I think that uh, old English is not that old. And I think there are some other things to, uh, to dissect. And I think that is womb. Yeah. Could also be an explanation because only women have wombs to bear a child, to give birth. Okay, why I am mentioning here Willard Frank Libby? Because I found today on this website answersingenesis.org that he deals also with the subject of the, li of the age of the earth or the age of, of mankind, something like that. And this Willard Frank Libby, this was an American physical chemist and he was uh, in the business of radiocarbon dating, you know, this uh, special C14 thing. And he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1960. Yeah? So he is in worldly matters a wise man. Hmm? And he was uh, thinking about how to deal with archaeologists and, and these people who want to calculate the age of uh, any fossil or the age of anything which they have discovered yeah and that's why i came across him and of course he won't uh, get into an argument with a nobel prize or with a nobel prize uh, uh, guy um, especially if he is highly educated in a greek numeral society <laughs> yeah we know this these are freemason departments Yep. Yeah. Read and the book code word Babylon. Read the book code word Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. He volunteered his services also for the Manhattan Project. So he was not a peace seeker <laughs> like like that. He was just a scientist. He wanted to, to have an explanation for anything. And he went into the subject of uh, carbon 14 dating. Yeah. So I'm just mentioning it here for the purpose that uh, I came across or stumbled across that kind of guy because um, he was a professor at chemistry and became a professor emeritus until his death in 1980. And he was a highly regarded uh, scientist. And now we have to face the fact that also this website Answers in Genesis deals with that on that uh, in that link here. I have to copy it and I have to paste it. It's more convenient. Look at this. Yeah, and also this guy here, this Ken Ham, also deals with the question, does carbon-14 dating disprove the Bible? And uh, I have read this article today when there was all, uh, there was uh, in the middle of the night in the United States because I'm just seven hours ahead of you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is very interesting and he comes up with uh, there are so many questions out of that that you cannot have a dis dis uh, uh, firm answer because you see that um, this would mean that um, every weather condition, environment condition would stay the same for the last thousands of years. And uh, this is very interesting of carbon dating. If you go down to that, you see that, uh, yeah, we would, we would absolutely, uh, yeah, go nuts because there are many, many scientific issues here. But uh, you see that every time it is so that the biblical amount of the age of the earth or the creational 
uh, matters are being disputed by science in the textbooks who claims you that the earth is uh, 4.5 billion years old billion not million billion yeah, and they claim they can uh, sort out how old everything is on this so-called planet which isn't the planet by just uh, simply measuring it uh, against uh, C14 and C4, C14 and C12 um, ingredients. Yeah, that's very interesting. But it raises more questions than answers. And then I, I quite like, I quite like people who are questioning things, even if they have been uh, named by Nobel Prize winners or highly regarded scientists. You have to question everything that because one, if one basic assumption is incorrect, then the result will be incorrect as well. So you have to go down to the to the basement of all things. Yeah. You see, carbon fourteen is mostly used to date once living things. once living things yeah it cannot be used this ken ham says uh, directly to date rocks yeah In this is it's, it's 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 so interesting here this website i can only recommend it yeah. i don't know what i i feel myself being uh being in the in, in the nearly trap now that i want to do into go into every detail but you see that uh, this guy has, has, has done this work on this website. So why shall I uh, be a parrot and uh, tell, tell like an actor or something like that what's on a website? You can discover it on your own. It is very interesting. If you really see, or really the series uh, will lead you to the understanding that everything can be questioned. There are no certain things here. There are assumptions. There are methods of hypothetical theory thinking, but you have to see it from a distant standpoint and you see that, okay, these are people and people can get it wrong. Even if people agree on one fact, it doesn't necessarily mean they are correct. If the majority of people out there think of that God does not exist, um, it does not actually mean that he does not exist. It just means that the majority of people thinks that he does not exist. And from the biblical standpoint of view, we know that the majority of people are also on the broad way needed to destruction. So they don't, the majority of people never to any kind of uh, any, any date on, in the, on this earth never believed in the true God of the Bible. So the majority of people are always being misled. There is an argument called argument ad populum, which means that the, the general uh, mass of people really thinks um, that, that the mass has it right when the majority of people has made a decision or comes to a conclusion that it must be right because the majority of people thinks that in this way. But it isn't so because there are only a very limited amount of people having having really knowledge, and you cannot have knowledge uh, by just reading something. You have to see it in the context. You have to compare it to other sources. We are comparing the Bible to worldly sources here. You can also compare the Bible with other books, but I haven't found any error of the Bible so far, which means that either I am totally dumb. Or second, um, I have studied the Bible and read the Bible uh, several times and I compare it to other books. And if I found no fault in it, then it is highly likely, in my belief it absolutely true, but it is highly likely, at least highly likely, that it has been divinely inspired. Because you see that in that amount of 66 books in the Bible with so many chapters and millions of words, uh, most likely, uh, that there is no fault in it. You see that it can, cannot derive from a, from a, from a standpoint of, of, a, of a merely man. Well, there you go, Michael. We get back to the basement, as you said earlier, or rather the foundation, which is what is infallibility? What are we going to make our rock of uh, our salvation? Is it going to be the gospel? Is it going to be the Bible? 
And, you know, traditionally we've been taught that the four first books of the New Testament are the gospel. But from our research and our study, we've found otherwise, especially when you factor in the 70th week of Daniel. It all works together. It's been from the beginning to the end, right? Uh, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega. Wouldn't it make more sense that the entire Bible works as one unit? You want continuity from the old covenant to the new one. So, I don't know. It's simple to me, Michael, but I've studied for a long time. I've asked a lot of difficult questions on my own, independently of anybody. And I think that's really where it's at, Michael. I think our videos cater to people that have had the same experience. They've come across the scriptures in their lives and they say, wait a second, things aren't adding up. Things aren't adding up. And then you discover when things are wrong, you need to separate from the folly. You need to separate from the sin and you need to make a path closer to Christ and further away from the people you're involved with. And it's just sure. that simple. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> you see, the, the, the carbon dating 14 process, for example, uh, tries to implicate or to indicate that, that the, the atmosphere and the conditions on the Earth were stable for thousands, or in their terms, millions of years. But we know that the flood arrived at about 2,300 years before Christ. So about 4,300 years from 2021. And we do not know what the conditions on the Earth were before the flood. You see, this, this is a, a very simple question. This is a very simple question. And, 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 and science wants to, to, to um, convince us that they have the answers by their carbon radiation method to uh, calculate the exact uh, lifespan or the exact uh, age of something and if you go down and put your sample to several labs you get also several results i have experienced that on on the several videos i don't know if they are correct you have to question everything and i counted the fact that people question the mass media but people fail to question most of the times the alternative media and that's also not correct we have to question everything every information. You see that the devil plays tricks with us. Also, the devil plays tricks on the alternative media, for sure. So the question arises that nobody, nobody really knows uh, what has evolved in that long period of time for thousands of years. How was the atmosphere? Um, how was humidity? Uh, how was radiation uh, 5,000 years ago? Nobody can tell you. They can only have, they only have dead samples of something and they compare it to the condition uh, now. But you see that, has it been linear? Has it been, uh, you see that you can, you cannot be sure. Don't trust any scientists. You see that these, these, these people try to figure something out, but they do not know. They only have methods of explanation. And the methods of explanation, they differ from time to time. So when they t tell you, oh, there's an ice age coming up in the uh, early 1970s, now they're telling you, oh, uh, uh, the, the polar ice is melting. Now we have to face a new heat wave. <laughs> yeah, 50 years later, that's just 50 years where the, the truth has been altered in 50 years. Now imagine the age of the earth for thousands of years. So nobody knows for sure. There are just methods of, at, at, the, at, at this just moment. And nobody, nobody can tell if 2022 is not a new quote unquote truth is coming out. Now it's CO2. 1980, you would have been told, that, oh, you drive a car, that's very, that's very dangerous because you emit, emit CO carbon monoxide 
Yeah, that's very dangerous. Of course, you can, if you inhale carbon uh, CO, yeah, with uh, only uh, without O, without two CO, carbon monoxide, um, you can die. Many people did. Yeah, running, having having a motor running in the garage in a stored garage, yeah, in, in inhaling the exhaust gases, you die in a certain amount of time. Therefore, you, you were told in 1980s, oh, your car needs a catalyst because then it will only admit, it will not not, not admit CO, but will only um, emit CO2, which is totally harmless. Now, nowadays, 30 years later, you know, they come up with the idea that CO2 is the big climate killer. It has to be get rid of. You see that the truth differs from time to time, and they will always get away with the explanation. Oh, this is the actual moment of science. This is the moment of our evaluation process. We did not know before, but that means that truth can be changed from time to time to time. They cannot be sure because from time to time a new truth will will come forth. And if you want to look for something, you will find something. And the explanation of CO2, in my humble opinion, makes absolutely no sense. Because there are certain models who are claiming that the CO level was much more higher 180 years ago than now. So it has nothing to do with the number of people, the number of animals, or the grade of industrialization. And uh, so, or the coal mines, or the power stations, or whatsoever. But you see that that's 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 for a much much later session. I think it's very interesting the carbon fourteen dating process. Kent Hovind once uh, talked about there's circular reasoning. They take the rocks and the fossils. Um, they, they take the rocks to uh, calculate uh, the age of the fossils and uh, the other way around. And this circular reasoning, and there is no abstract value on it either. Also, if you cannot agree how old the earth is actually because you cannot know what what the level of uh, carbon 14 in the atmosphere was or, or radiation in general was uh, thousands of years ago you see there were no measurements there were no tools for that there were no software or computers to do so then it's absolutely dead science it's just uh, you will get the conclusion within your system but your system system must not necessarily be correct you assume things and you prove it with your own assumptions and then within the system it's absolutely correct but outside of that if one assumption is incorrect your complete model will fail and that's a that's a problem with with the science. They always they always use their things as basic knowledge and a, as a uh, foundation for everything. But if the foundation is incorrect, then uh, it's it's just a belief system. It is not science anymore because if their foundation is weak, then the entire house will crumble. So this is science. You see, that works ab absolutely perfect if you are in a science community, because everybody assumes in that science co uh, community, OK, we have the same foundation. We do not believe in God, uh, uh, at least, uh, uh, and, and of course not in Jesus Christ. We do not believe in creation. We believe in evolution. We believe that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. And so they all have the same foundation. And on base on that foundation, they have their calculation methods. But if the Earth is not 4.5 billion years old, but only 6,000 years, as the Bible tells us, then all the people on, and the majority of people, they are totally incorrect because they work with the wrong foundation. And I face that in psychology, I face that in science, that everybody in their community they have the same assumption, but it's not necessarily the truth. So, If you are really into that, that you have to uh, find out how old the Earth is and you don't believe in the Bible, you have to trust the scientists. But uh, be ready that the truth is exchangeable. 
when there is a new method coming up and a new theory has been come up, then uh, you, have, you will change the truth also. 80 years ago, people thought the atom, that's it. Then there were certain other things. Then there were this, the, the quarks. Yeah, and then there were this and there were that and that at the moment they are you they are searching for the God's particle. How can they search for a God's particle when they do not believe in God? Ah, you see, there are so many things which have not been made uh, public. For example, that the magnetic field on the Earth could be um, is is not stable. And we do not know how it proceeded all these uh, thousands of years ago until now. Uh, we do not know the, the long-term variation of C14 level. You see, that also goes for the oxygen level. We do not know how the oxygen level before the flood was. According to the Bible, we know it was different, but we cannot have any absolute figures because it's not important. If we believe in God, we know that he has done everything absolutely correct because he is the only absolute. He cannot absolutely make any errors because he is almighty. He does not make any errors. So we are living here in an earth which is absolutely perfect for us. It is not too hot, it is not too cold. We have a, a perfect amount of oxygen around us. We have an environment which suits us. We have uh, metals and uh, items and uh, environment uh, to work with. We have animals supporting us. Men have women and, and, and the other way around. So everything is perfect. Yeah, you cannot exist on Venus or Mars. But people would like to have it very complicated. Yeah, they have to be blind by science. Now, we do not know what the flood have, have made an impact on the amount of carbon also. We do not know all these things. And there are so many scientists which are coming up for, to, to, to learn how the age of the Earth is or supposed to be is. Yeah. So if it, it actually has been based on their assumptions. If you if if you do not have the same assumption, then you get to different results because your original point of research is uh, totally different. Because if you approach someone who absolutely neglects God, he will come to another result because he's he's got uh, first and foremost uh, a totally other foundation and he seeks for another thing to find. And you you don't find the truth if you're not looking for the truth but you're just looking for the things you want to you want to find we are just searching for the truth here yeah. all these methods are based on assumptions we cannot measure anything or we have no re, uh, history of, of things which supposed to happen 150 million years ago yeah no computer was invented So it's very interesting, this uh, new answers and fossils and genetics, you see that it's, it's very interesting to, to read in that book from time to time. It's very interesting. And I think this is the next upcoming subject. And I hope that uh, we have, we, we've been not, not lost in our worldly science, but uh, maybe we can do a shorter session afterwards and uh, then uh, call it a quits now, Brett. What do you think? Sure. That'd be fine. Yeah, so sorry for some uh, some uh, lost time because we could not uh, think of Kent Hovind. <laughs> but if somebody ha is, has the name Ken Ham and the other is Kent Hovind. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we are both awaking at the moment. So thank you for your time and I'm handing it over to Brett uh, if maybe he has some remarks on, on that uh, issue. Yeah, thanks, Michael. No, I just... Uh... You know, we've grown up in a world that uh, has uh, lived under the yoke of Rome. And um, it's a, uh, a very difficult subject to approach with uh, the elders, especially, of our families and uh, and, uh, you know, that's that's the yoke I live under with my family. And um, some would uh, 
maybe disagree with me that we should uh, even have uh, fellowship with our own family. But um, at times, I think uh, you got to come to a resolution. And uh, sometimes that's uh, not going to please everyone. You have to choose uh, what you're going to do. And that's kind of where I'm at here today. And uh, it's weighing really heavy on my mind. And um, it's it's too personal. So let's call it quits, Michael. And, and we'll meet up next time. And I hope everyone's doing well. God bless Maranatha.